The time has finally come. After a few key mods, we're going to hit the tracks with my brand new Y62. Oh man, this thing is so nice to drive. <laughs> Spectacular. 12 volt is in and that is a huge win. Solar pedal is on. This is her maiden voyage off the blacktop and into the bush for her first major shakedown. Well, today is a monumental day. It's a day I've probably been waiting for for years, let's be honest. Today is the first day I take my brand new Y62 Patrol, not only off-road, but camping for its first time. I've driven it about eight kilometers off-road, <laughs> four k's down to my local beach and four k's back again, and haven't had it off-road since. Never camped out of it, obviously, so I've got it decked out. We've done quite a bit of work to it. Keen to get down and live out it for a night and just give it a shakedown, give it a rundown and just see how it goes. Really, really pumped for this. Of course, we have come a heck of a long way. Nine months ago, this thing was a wagon. It's now chopped and extended with a canopy on the back. So we have come a heck of a long way. But even since then, we've put a lot of work into it. The back's all decked out now, the 12 volts done, there's a winch in. I've got mirrors on either side. We have come a heck of a long way. So it is time to get it off-road, get it dirty, and see how this whole package performs. If you can't tell, I am excited. Let's do it. Now, before we head out to the tracks, let's have a look at some of the work we've done to get her prepped for a maiden voyage. Pull up here for a second. Now look, the next logical step in the process of the build, for me anyway, before we went too much further, was to get the 12 volt nail. Pretty important and a pretty big chapter in any build, really. And I wanted to do it right the first time. And one of the great things about a new four wheel drive is that you can start with a blank canvas. There's no old wiring. Old mate hasn't had a go three or four times to get a 12 volt system in, it's completely new. To that end, I wanted something neat and fresh that was fairly simple, something that I could add to later on without any dramas that was labelled. So you weren't going, well, what's that fuse for? Wouldn't have a clue. Got in touch with my mate Dan from Our Tech Off Grid. Off Grid had me straight away. That's where I wanted to be heading now. Dan lives just down the road from me, so that was an absolute bonus. But more to the point, the bloke is an absolute stickler for perfection. If it's not done perfect, it gets ripped out and done again. I spent a couple of days with Dan. We went through the entire vehicle and the 12 volt that came out the other end, second to none. So stoked with how it turned out. Have a look at how the days went. I reckon you'll agree. Dan did an amazing job. Yep, that is rock solid. Ain't going anywhere, folks. Battery is in. 240 amps of lithium battery from Hardcore. I've gone with 240 amps, it seems like a lot, but I'm actually pretty hardcore, pardon the pun, when I'm out bush on my cameras. I use a lot of different batteries out there for cameras, for recording, for photos, the whole lot. So, laptops of course. So, 240 amps should keep me out of trouble. Now, one thing I've been really pleasantly surprised about with this battery is of course, it's got a Bluetooth app built into it for uh, iOS and Android. I connected to it a while back on my mobile just to see what the state of charge was before we put it in, and the app works so well. It shows you everything you'd ever really want to know about this battery. State of charge, state of discharge, how long you've got to go, everything in there. It even breaks it down into individual cells of the battery so you can have a look at your battery health. Really good. I reckon I'm going to get a heck of a lot of use out of that battery. All right, no rest for the wicked. Let's keep going. With the battery in, first thing to do is get power running from the auxiliary battery under the bonnet to the rear. Dan's run the cable outside the four-wheel drive first to ensure the cable is the right length. We've got a positive, a negative, and a starter wire for the C-Tech unit. All of these are then protected by some conduit and zip-tied securely. Now, when it comes to running in through the canopy wall, always run rubber grommets and glands to ensure there's no chance of the wires rubbing through. All right, quick summary of what we've just done here, or rather what Dan's just done there. He's just run cable from the front of the vehicle all the way through to the back. We've got earth, of course, positive, and our ignition cable. Come through the back, up and under through the back. That little gadget up there, that's called a gland. I learnt that today, that's a gland. We've got plenty of cable here, and of course now this will just hang here for a bit, we'll just leave that. It's into the shed, and work on our big board of goodies. But so far, this is looking sick. Alrighty, step number one. Get everything laid out and planned on your backboard before you do anything else. Now, Dan's done this already for us. We've taken the backboard out of the mitts canopy, half a dozen bolts, and you can lay it on your bench. And we're gonna actually build all this 
in situ and then pick the backboard up, bolt it back in and just add positive power and negative power. Of course you need earth, earth is so important to this as it is. So what have we got here? Here's the nuts and bolts of it. We've got a D250SE now. That of course is lithium compatible. Fuse box shunt so that we can use the SeaTech monitor over here. I've chosen three Anderson plugs here just in case I get anything else that I need to plug in. I will dedicate one of these to my fridge. The rest are for anything else. SIG socket, exactly the same. And down here, some USB points. Again, some fuses. The beauty of this is that we can see exactly what we're dealing with. We can build it all up here nice and neat. All the cabling goes in behind here. There's a void underneath there. Gets bolted back up as it is, and you're ready to rock and roll. Once it's all wired, it's just a matter of putting the board back in the canopy, hooking up the power, and bolting everything into place. How simple is that? Well, that was a delicate balancing act getting that in here. Um, Dan and I, mostly me, <laughs> I just got a rude look from Dan. Uh, we've managed to get everything into place right now. And you can see the importance of having this board off the vehicle and in the shed where you can lay everything out, put everything where you need it, and then put the board back in. Imagine trying to do this in situ. Be a nightmare. 12 volt is in and that is a huge win. What do we got left? I think we're getting pretty darn close. Where's Dan? It's almost time for a beer, I reckon. <laughs> I've just finished installing a set of seat covers in the old Y62. Pop in here, check those out. That's embroidery there. I worked with the blokes at, uh, at Razorback to get these done. Sent them in my logo here, and they said, oh, how about we put a little bit more on? Then we put the Y62 patrol riding up the top. Obviously, I've got a matching one over there. They come up an absolute tra I reckon they just look fantastic. It looks so sick. Of course, this is the premium range. They fit the seats perfectly. As soon as I put that one in over there, me dog jumped in it. <laughs> I've got dog hair on it straight away, but that's the idea behind having seat covers. But folks, I didn't get any special treatment here. You too can order a set of seat covers exactly like these from Razorback. So uh, send in the photo that you want on there, the picture, your logo, whatever it is you want written on there, you and your mate's name, you and your missus's name, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, Razorback will look after you and you'll get a set of seat covers that look exactly like these. And I reckon they're pretty darn sick. Just Google Razorback seat covers for all the information you need. Last one. All right, Whew, it's hot up here. Solar pedal is on. Looks a treat too, another hardcore product. This is 170 watt solar panel. Puts in just under 10 amps an hour, 9.5 amps an hour. Should be plenty for me. Uh, nice and slim line too, really is a very, very nice fit up here. Now a couple of tips that I've learned from my own experience and my, uh, my mistakes in the past in putting solar panels in is where you put them is so very, very important. In the past I've put my solar panel right here in the middle of the roof rack and what that means is, good position for it, but you can't use your roof rack for anything else. So I've moved mine over to the side. I can put a swag down here, even chuck some firewood up here if I needed to. Second thing I've learned from experience is make sure you raise your solar panel up to match the height of your rack. I had mine on the side on the GU, and what it meant was that at all times of day except high noon, right in the middle of, day, of the day, your rack, the edges of your rack would actually cast a shadow over the top of your solar panel. It's not ideal. So by putting it up here, up nice and level, you can't get a shadow over it, it's impossible. It also means that it's nice and streamlined. Air can just fly over the top of it, but uh, that looks really good. Righto, time for the spotties and light bar. You've got to run a power cord up to your light bar. Of course, the power cord does come as part of the loom. So it all comes with a loom, don't have to worry about that. But getting it up here can be tricky. Some cars are easier than others. I have seen some pretty dodgy jobs in the past where I just run the power cable up here and a couple of dobs of Sikaflex to hold it in place. Not doing that with the big girl. What Dan does, he gets one of these bad boys right here. Now, Dan calls that the snake. I personally would call that the worm, but all men are built differently. <laughs> so you run this down inside there. See how you can poke it right down inside there? Go all the way through and it pops out in the firewall. Then where it pops out, you get a bit of black tape, tape your power cable to that, and then pull it back out all the way through until it pops out exactly where you need it. Nice and neat. Now, Another thing about why I have put the light bar up here. This bar up here was actually made for me by Ruben at DMW. It's a cracker, nice and strong. I'll be able to carry anything I like up there, but there was a bit of wind noise and I was sitting on 110 k's per hour. So by putting the light bar up the front here, it actually creates a bit of disturbance and kind of creates a bit of a bubble of air up here that stops a lot of that wind noise. So it's a bit of a double edge for me. Light at night and no more wind noise so I can hear Taylor Swift. Something I love, absolutely froth about is learning stuff that you've got no idea about from people that are so much more experienced at it than yourself. Now, what Dan's doing at the back right now is finding a source of ignition power to run, come down here with me, I'm hand hold at the moment, come down here with us, to run the daytime running lights on my spots and also we're gonna run that up to the back for the D250SE which needs 
ignition source for the smart alternator. So we're going to find that by using the fan, which comes on with ignition, and we're going to use what's called an adder circuit. Adder, circuit. adder circuit in there. I just went and bought an adder circuit. I know all about them. There's one right there. We're going to add that in there, and that's going to be our ignition source without trying to cut into wires or do anything dodgy like that using bits of tape. Super cool. This is super cool. I'm going to come out of this, and I'm basically going to be an auto sparky, mate. Take your job down here. He's very safe. He is very safe. Ah, how slick do they look? Spotties are on. Daytime running lights are all hooked up. Nice and solid, they ain't going anywhere. Can't wait to try these bad boys out as soon as the sun goes down. But that's a neat little feature there, isn't it? That looked cool. Hey, we look at man. Righto, Graham, we're all done. We're done? We're done. Mate, I'll tell you what, you work faster than I do, that's for sure. That is fantastic, mate. Now, I've got to say, I owe you several beers at the Dunsey, mate. Anytime, I'm ready to head down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're walking distance, because Dunsey Pub's just here, mate. That's right. Yep. Seriously, man, you've done an amazing job. This thing is absolutely shining. I can't wait to get out and test it. Um, I've got a couple of things to do beforehand but I'm hoping to get down, uh, maybe down towards the Warren this week. Yep. See how we go. Test the whole thing out and give it a run. Your work will be absolutely fantastic, I'm sure of it. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Catch you at the pub. Will do. Cheers, Cheers. Dan. Cheers, man. Thanks, Graham. I'm going to have a look at this brand new range of snatch clothing to hit the website. Now, it doesn't get much better than this. Winter camping is on us, folks. Whether you like it or not, it's here to stay. We've got winter. It's going to be super cold. Get yourself prepared. Don't stay at home. Get yourself out in the right kit. Come and have a look at this. We've got all sorts of hoodies, brand new hoodies with us. We've got new camo ones. We've got new designs. We've got um, fresh new jumpers. We've got socks, folks. Socks. Keep your feet warm around the campfire. We've got brand new hats. So get these beanies, though. I reckon. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Put that on right now. That will keep the old noggin warm and looking just a little bit better. We've got new flannels, as you can see. Long sleeve tees. One of my personal favourites, these ones here. They don't get much warmer than that. The old zip up as well. Guys, get ready for winter camping. It is here, and do yourself a favor. Jump on the website right now so you don't miss out. That was a real turning point for me, getting the 12 volt put in, because 12 volt is when a car becomes, in my sort of humble opinion, a four wheel drive. It's got everything I now need to go bush. You know, I can run my fridge for days. I've got solar, I've got lighting, I've got dual battery system, I've got ando plugs, I've got SIG sockets, I've got USB sockets, you know what it's like, you know what I'm talking about. So for me, getting that 12 volt put in was a real turning point. Doing what I'm doing now because of it. Righto, this is when things started to get pretty serious. I took the vehicle up to Mark at AMV up in Perth. Mark fitted the winch for me and gave the vehicle its first service. Big thanks, Mark. The guy is an absolute gentleman and has looked after me the whole way through the process with the Y62. Now we're starting to get some things on the vehicle. 12 volts in, spare tires on, winches on, bull bars on. <laughs> you name it, we're starting to add weight to it. So already, I'm over the vehicle's original GVM, three and a half tons. I've got four and a half tons. I've got a ton to play with, that's a lot. But the brakes on the old girl were designed for a three and a half ton vehicle. So before I even decided to come on this trip, even though it was only a short trip, I got in touch with Bendix and organized a brake upgrade kit to be put on as soon as possible. Time to drop in and see my mates at Margaret River Motors. I've been running a Bendix brake upgrade kit on the D-Max forever. So it was a simple choice to do the same to this four wheel drive. So we're out with the original gear and fitting upgraded slotted rotors, high performance brake pads and braided brake hose. A quick bleed of the system and I'm good to go. <laughs> and stop. Alrighty, this is the part we all look forward to. End of the blacktop and onto the gravel and sand. A couple of boys. There you go, lads. Alright, let's get stuck into it. It is time to use all four wheels. Now to do that, okay, four high, says it down there, and then <laughs> I've got a little picture of the desert with a cactus and the word sand. That sand in front of me. Okay, see how it goes. Such a nice car to drive. Feel that. <laughs> oh man. What's this up ahead? <laughs> All right, well, they say <laughs> one way to christen anything is to scratch it or get it dirty. That'll do it. Mud. Mud and a brand new vehicle. They don't mix. Well, they do in my world. <laughs> 
Righto, the place we're heading into today is called Black Point. Been in there before, showing you around. It's a lovely spot, really special part of the world too. It's got good camping, fishing, surfing, the whole lot. But the track in is corrugated. It's got these horrible bumps, washouts. It's often really quite soft. You're getting the picture. It's the perfect, <laughs> it's the perfect track to try out a brand new four wheel drive. And of course, the end result is picture perfect camping on the south coast. So, I'm just gonna suck it all in and enjoy it. How good is it? Looking green down here, looking really good. Start of winter, it's only gonna get better. You know, this track here, it's a little known fact that whilst we've got some very famous stock routes in Australia, you know, the Canning Stock Route, the Gibb River Road, this here is actually part of the Warren Blackwood stock route. It was a very large stock route that was used quite some time ago, but very actively to bring cattle out of the bush and down towards the coast to better pastures. So it's not really known, but this little section of Southern WA was actively used by cattlemen to graze cattle right through the bush all through here. And what I'm driving on right now was actually part of the original stock route. Black Point itself is so only just down in here, but before we get into camp, I know this is not a full-blown travel show, but I've got to share something with you. There's just a couple of little spots out here that'll blow you away. Let's go and have a look. Have a go at this. This incredible bit of real estate down here is called Surfer's Cove, for good reason too. Check this out. On a big swell, that wave down there wraps all the way around the cove and all the way down into the beach. WA is not blessed with a lot of point breaks, so that's pretty special down there. When I was a younger bloke, I used to paddle out down there on my own. I'm old and wise now. <laughs> Place actually spooks me a little bit, but on its day, a world-class wave down there. And what a view. Spectacular. Do you get the chance, come and see Black Point. And just around the corner is another cracker spot. This spot never fails to impress. This is called the Stepping Stones. I'm gonna park up here, and I'm gonna let the drone do its job. <laughs> Mind blowing. Formed 135 million years ago by volcanoes, this is Black Point and the Stepping Stones. The area gets its name from the black volcanic rock that looks, oh yeah, you guessed it, like stepping stones. Cool, hey? Well, I think you'll agree that that is one of the more utterly stunning parts of the world. Black Point, if you ever get down here, come and have a look. Well worthwhile now. It's getting on to about 4.30. It's dark about 6, 6.30. I reckon we might be in for a bit of weather tonight, so I am gonna head straight into camp Get the big girl set up, see how we go. Just in here, just in here. So this little campsite that I've got here is actually back up off the beach quite a bit. So you don't get the wind, it's always quite protected, which is really important on this stretch of coast. But it's a really tight campsite. We've arrived and it's time to get set up for the very first time. This setup is super simple, just how I like it and I've got my trusty little step for the hard to get to places. Nothing fancy here, folks. Then it's out with the awning, kitchen, swag, and then it's time to get the fire cranking. Well, <laughs> here is to cheers, folks. Good on yous. Mm. 
you can't tell, I am grinning like a chimp from ear to ear. Okay, fair enough. I've only come 100, 120K from home, but the first time off-road and camping out of the new beastie. And it's gone well. It has gone exceptionally well. The drive-in today was just like butter. I can't wait to take this thing on something a bit more harder. Let's have a bit of a look at where we're at so far with the vehicle. Still a long way to go and I'm still getting used to it, but let's see what we've done and some of the reasons why. Starting first and foremost, of course, with the Clearview Pantry right here. I've had my eye on one of these bad boys for a while for a couple of reasons. I like the modular design. Um, all my cooking gear stored inside here. Cooktop stays on top. It's just a really well thought out piece of kit, but what it does for me is bring my cooking height back down to a level where I'm super comfortable. Up here was okay, but it was a bit too high for cooking, cutting things up, etc., etc. So this has really made life very livable for me. You might have noticed too that the car has come down ever so slightly in height. That was always the plan as we added weight to it. The shocks were always tuned for a certain amount of weight, which I didn't have when it was empty. Now we're really starting to bring it down and I'm really liking where the workable height is at the moment. Right, of course, this is the living area for the whole four wheel drive and it's just working the way it should. The 12 volt up in here is doing exactly what I reckon a good 12 volt system should do. It's just working. 170 watts of solar up on the roof. Uh, and of course, I've got that 240 amp hour hardcore lithium battery in the back there. Now, I've had this fridge on to give you a bit of an idea. I've had this fridge on for about two weeks in the driveway at home and uh, constantly, and it has not dropped the battery below 80%. So that, that uh, combination of solar panel and lithium battery is just working and working well. I'm confident that I could stay out here without resupply and so long as I've got solar pretty much indefinitely. And that's something I really like to hear. Now. Speaking of staying in camp longer, I've always found that water is one of your biggest limiting factors. If you don't have a source of fresh water, well, you've got to go and get it. So staying in camp longer is always going to be limited by your water supply. Now, I was speaking to Tim from Mitz when we were building the canopy for me. He understood that. He's put a big water container at the front, behind in the front of the canopy. There's also an underbody water container plus my jerry. It means I've got around about 120 litres of fresh plus I carry another 20 of drinking water. It's around 140, 150 litres of water. Now, a bit of a grubby bugger. I don't worry about showers, so that means I could live out here with the solar, with the lithium, and with my water supplies for quite some time, and that means a lot to me. Now, check this out. This is something Timbo taught me. Behind the ladder here, he's made a recess just big enough to fit a four kilo gas bottle. I've only got a two in there at the moment, but it actually fits a four kilo gas bottle. Now, he figured that out on a trip up in the Kimberley and just made this come out a little bit more so you can slide your gas bottle down here and just ratchet strap it in. Brilliant because, check this out. Oh, I love this little bit here. It's where you can put a beer. <laughs> it's great to have that gas bottle there because check this out. When you pull your trundle tray out, that's where you put your barbecue when you're having a barbie of an evening. Come on. How good is it? Alrighty, this side here, well, Storage. This pretty much mimics both the GU and the D-Max. We've got living, cooking area, passenger side, storage, driver side. Works really well. Uh, what have I got in here? Air compressor, water. We've got a battery, big drawer here. I haven't even hardly touched the inside of that. Little nooks and crannies. I've got my shovel, my axe down this side here. Tools up the top here, a little table. It's all just coming together. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Rightio, those of you who have been paying attention will notice that I've got a brand new set of clear views on here as well. Good reason for that, get to it in a second. These mimic the Y62 mirrors perfectly, so they've got that strange little camera that's down there. Uh, they all light up, they do that warning thing when there's another car coming the other way, all that technology, it blows my mind. But they, unlike the Y62 mirrors, they come out like that for towing, so you've got extra good visibility. Why is that important? Well watch this space. We have got quite the development coming up at Four Wheel Drive 24-7, but you're going to have to wait for that. <laughs> well, one thing that 30 odd years of four wheel driving has taught me is that at some point you're going to stuff up. I do it all the time. When it happens, you're going to wish you had a winch. Now, this big girl here has got a GVM of four and a half tonnes. If I even go close to that, which I think I'm probably going to, when I get stuck, I'm going to need to be pulled out by something with a fair bit of power to it. So I've gone for the old 13XP, you can't really see it, 13XP run the winch down there. And I've done that because we have flogged the back end out of these things so often when we're filming for four-wheel drive 24-7 on tracks all around Australia that I figured if we can get all those vehicles through unscathed, it'll get me out of trouble. Now, fingers crossed, this never comes off there. 
but if it ever has to, I reckon it's got what it takes. Well, like all four wheel drives, the big rig is still a bit of a work in progress. There's a few things I wanna change, a few things I wanna add. Hey, speaking of which, you're watching this, what would you do next if you were me? Put it in the comments down below. What have I missed out? What do I need to add to it? Put it in the comments down below. I read every single one of them. And if you come up with a great idea, and I haven't thought of it, I'll get in touch with you. Now look, let's see how far this thing has come. It was a wagon not even nine months ago. Look at it now. To say I'm stoked with how today has gone is an understatement. My dream rig out in the bush for the first time. There's only one more thing that can make this better. I'm gonna get a fire going. I've got a cheeky little steak there, a couple of brewskis, a little bit of country and western. You know what I'm talking about. You get it, you get it. <laughs> if I'm being honest, this is my favorite part of heading bush. Sun's going down, the fire's lit, and it's time to just fully chill out. Now, we've got a pretty simple meal tonight. I've got a few fire roasted veggies and a good slab of Southwest cow, cooked perfectly over Jarrah, of course. No fancy plates or dishes for me. Eat straight off the barbecue, and yes, that is one damn good bit of steak. If I do say so myself. What a day. So stoked with the new rig, I'm utterly knackered. It's time for lights out, a cheeky nightcap, and then I'm gonna hit the swag. I'll see you in the morning. Now look, I don't know about you folks, but I sleep the best when under canvas. Nothing beats it. It's a beautiful start to the day. Time for a coffee and my go-to bush brekkie. Bacon and eggs with hash browns instead of toast. Yeah, give it a try, but don't put too many mushrooms in the pan, eh? <laughs> yep, that was damn sensational. Is there a better way to start the day? Well, this marks the end of the line for me. I'm gonna air up here. Blacktop is just there. What a couple of days. Thoroughly enjoyable. Well, Shakedown trip done and successful. I was surprised at just how comfortable I was camping out of the big bus. I kind of thought it might have been a, I don't know, a bit of a compromise, but it wasn't at all. Been spoilt with the GU, I've got to say. Rooftop tents, they are the way to go as far as I'm concerned. And I reckon a rooftop tent will fit just nicely up there. That could be my next mod, we'll see how we go. Now, hard to believe, but in a week's time, I'll be in Cape York driving my G60 Patrol up the Cape. <laughs> Talk about chalk and cheese, but I'm looking forward to it just as much as I was looking forward to this. Righto, I'm going to air up, hit the blacktop and get out of here. I've got a fair bit to do in the next week, including giving this old girl a wash. Stay tuned. Lots more to come with the Y62. To say I'm frothing is an understatement. Catch us next time. <laughs>